Good morning, all. We are here for an application hearing in the matter CFI 14 2010 before Registrar Mark Beer. The applicant is represented by Re Brown Rednick. Lead counsel is Roger Kennel. Assisting is Ravinder Kukrar. The respondent is represented by Herbert Smith Freehills. Lead counsel is Stuart Patterson. Assisting is David Smallings. Yes, good morning, sir. Good morning. Um, perhaps before we, uh, before we start, um, it might be worth just checking what documents uh, you have. We, we, we filed three um, volumes of documents, which, uh, which are, the, are the documents that uh, BR has disclosed further to our request and, and the order of, uh, of Justice Sir David Steele. Um, and then yesterday, uh, we filed uh, a list of questions, which we intend to put to Yes, I have three bundles. Yes, three bundles. I have your application. Yes, the application. I have the questions. Yes. And I've also been given uh, the order of Justice David Steele issued on the 13th of May, mm -hmm. the consent order yes. um, issued on 28th of May, and the second judgment of Justice David Steele of a hearing of 23rd to 24th of November. Yeah. I have reviewed those documents. I have not reviewed the bundles. No, I, I think that's quite right. The, the, the questioning from Mr. Marshad is, is by reference to those documents. So as, as and when necessary, we'll just go to Mr. Marshad will be taken to them. Uh, in terms of uh, how the examination is going to happen, I, I, I would suggest that um, the, way we, the way we've done this is that we've, we've, we've got a fairly detailed list of questions and we've just planned to go through those um, rather than you necessarily going through the, the, standard, the standard form. Um, and we have some questions at the end that are sort of meant to just tidy up and, and make sure that, in effect, we're getting answers to the standard questions. Um, and, and, of course, if you wish to ask any additional questions, um, then, you know, of course you can. Um, but we were supposed to do it that way rather than you going through the, the form. I don't know if that's agreeable to, to, to you. Um, I have no objection as to what the question. I think the point was to use this list of questions rather than the standard form. Yeah, okay. Yes, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Thank you. Because uh, the, the disclosure has to a certain extent answer some of the questions here and, and you know, just clarify, try and get as full of answers as possible. Um, and then, in terms of uh, at the end, Mr. Marshall is supposed to sign a statement um, that, that, uh, that, that records his, his answers to these questions. And, um, that's, that's how that's. I see that we have a live note yes. here today. At what frequency would it be right for us to, to break? So if you could indicate to my learned colleague here when you'd like to have a break, uh, in one way or another, and then um, uh, we'll, we'll break. And how long do you need for each break? Um, 10 to 15 minutes. Okay, thank you. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll see what progress we make. Um, I'm going to start asking questions, then I'm going to hand over to Mr. Tuckle to ask some of them. Thank you. Um, if I may, before we, before we start with the questions, um, just three um, preliminary remarks on behalf of um, uh, BR and, uh, and Mr. Kawari. Um, the, the first is um, that the 27 page list of questions was received uh, yesterday afternoon by by us on behalf of the R and Mr. Hawaii and passed on to him um, immediately. Unfortunately, Mr. Hawaii was unable um, to
to, to look at the question straight away. He turned to them in the early evening and did spend quite some time preparing answers to the question. So it was ready today to, to be able to answer them. But inevitably, in that time frame, he may not have absolutely everything um, that, the, that the court and um, the applicant may be seeking, um, given that, that time frame. So I would make that come out at the beginning. Um, he has, however, sought to do his best to be able to answer the question. Just on, on that, so I have had a discussion extent that um, Ms. Marchand is unable to answer a question today or, or thinks he needs to check something to be able to give a correct answer, we, we would be amenable to, to uh, Ms. Marchand following this up with an affidavit that, that provides answers to, to those, those questions that we can't answer today. Um, and uh, just, we may well have certain further document requests as well, uh, which are right now, so uh, the document's already disclosed. And we would proposing to put those in very short, uh, early next week um, so that they could be produced within a further very short time frame and then that can all be addressed in, yeah, in the affidavits as well. Uh, with, with, and, and I think that would then, there would then be an adjournment perhaps of this examination to a later date um, and, and if, if it's necessary after the affidavit we, we go ahead with that but hopefully it wouldn't, wouldn't be necessary. In, in principle we, we agree with that structure, well I need instructions, but that, that structure sounds sensible to us. Um, but the second point um, is that um, Mr. Marshad is actually leaving PR at the end of this month, on the 29th of June or, or thereabouts. Um, he has actually extended his um, intended departure date, which was at the end of May, in order to be able to assist the court today. And since he is the person who has the best knowledge of PR's um, financial so he has um, prepared answers on the basis that he'll be available here today to answer, answer questions. Um, he's ready to do that. Um, the the follow-up, um, not just in relation to the issues that we've just been talking about regarding the length of the questions and the, the inevitability of some need for follow-up, but in any event, the, the, there may well be other issues that arise after today um, will be dealt with in a, in a sensible way. Mr. Marchand is available for the next um, few weeks until 29th. There will be um, an alternative The third point um, is uh, one I suspect we'll come to when we come to the questions regarding the, um, the search process, and we can perhaps deal with it at that time. But I wanted to flag the point at the outset that the obligation to produce documents is an obligation of PR, not Mr. Marshad personally. And so, although Mr. Marshad is happy and able to provide um, his um, evidence, if you like, in relation to how the, the process was conducted, uh, he's not in a position um, to, to provide necessarily a complete account because that's a matter for PR. And again, we're happy to provide, um, and I think it's maybe agreed that PR can provide a letter um, or some other explanation in writing to, um, to set out how the, the search was conducted in accordance with the questions set out in the, in the list of the so. And so I go back to the fourth point. Um, there are some additional documents that um, Mr. Marsh had found last night in the course of looking at the questions. Um, I believe that at least one copy has been made, maybe not enough copies, but there being copies, so they'll be handed out to the uh, later. Uh, so is the proposal, Mr. Kennelly, you will take um, Mr. Marsh up through the questions? Uh, yes. Yes, sir. I've, I have no objection to that. Okay. Thanks. Call Mr. Marshad.
I swear by Almighty God to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. Good morning. Mr. Marshall, could you, I, I didn't catch that, could you give your full name and your um, uh, address for the, for the record? Okay, my full name is Hawari Marshall, and currently my physical address is uh, Ivory Grand Service Apartments in Barsha, Dubai. <laughs> thank you. Well, thank you for coming here uh, today to answer the questions, and uh, I appreciate that the questions came to you yesterday. Um, but if you could do your best to answer the questions with as fulsome uh, answers as possible, please, today. Um, the questions are going to be asked to you by Mr. Cannell, but if you could answer them to me, um, that would be helpful. And um, if you have questions about the questions being asked, please don't hesitate to, to clarify the question so that when you answer it, it's clear in your mind the question that's being asked of you. And if you have any other questions during the course of this uh, session uh, of, of what's happening or otherwise, please don't hesitate to, to ask me so that we can um, try and deal with those as we go along. Thank you. Mr. Kels. Good morning, Mr. Marshat. Thank you very much for coming today and indeed for extending your appointment with, with DR. So, you obviously uh, you were served with our with the National Bond Corporation's application um, and, uh, personally, and I understand you were called out of the PR board meeting to, to be served with that. Yes, I was. Um, I'm sorry, just to clarify, Mr. Marshall is not the director of PR. No. We understand he was in a board meeting when, when the service happened. And can you describe what the disclosure process has been in terms of uh, searching for the documents that, National, that NBC requested? Is this on your list of questions, or is yes, this? Yes. So I've got uh, so I've got the page. I thought we'd start with asking asking about the disclosure process. So this is uh, so I should have flagged that. This is on page three. I see. So I'll repeat the question. Could you please describe what the disclosure process was in respect of these documents? Um, so you can see, you can see the question there. Who, who has had conduct of the process and uh, who's been responsible for securing compliance? I don't want to keep standing up, and I'll try not to, but I wanted to, to, to refer back to the reservation I made at the beginning of the lecture. Yes, that's an Yes, that's yes, responsibility of the president, but I, I, I'll not stand up again. No, certainly, but we, I think we can, we can get his answers and then to the extent he doesn't know something, that will become clear. I think to the best of your knowledge. Yes. Okay. To, well, uh, the disclosure process that we followed was after we, got the, we received the order, uh, we had a joint meeting between accounts, finance, and legal, and we used the May 31st, 2015 management account as a reference point and we tried to obtain every document that supported each of the numbers on the list as far as the different subsidiaries and, and the DR financial account. That was a reference point. And we obviously followed the order and tried to uh, obtain all the relevant documents that we were aware of. And so you mean, if, uh, so you, by reference to the management accounts, and so have you produce all the, all the underlying documents that have gone towards producing those accounts. When, when, can you clarify underlying documents? I, I think we can do this one of two ways. You can ask the questions that are on the sheet, yes. or, or I'll ask the questions that are on the sheet, um, but because those are the questions that, are, that have yes, been raised. Yes. If we could stick to those, um, I, I, and I'm bearing in mind we've got a fairly hard cut off, and I'm conscious yes. that uh, some which I won't necessarily be with the company for that much longer, so to adjourn and come back might be difficult. If we could stick to the questions and go through them, it may be, it, we may get through this better. So, so that, that was follow-up, and perhaps it's best that we follow-up. Can, can I add, if it's helpful, Thank uh, you. and as far as um, 
it's quite important to do so. I, I'm happy to allow a, a little latitude in terms of questions if it feels good at what then then you put an end to it if you like. So that there isn't a need to follow up. Um, but I, I will absolutely do respect I'll stand up if I object. Okay, well um, so and which individual has had overall conduct of the process? Several, several individuals from different departments took, took the ownership with reference to the specific documents. If they were accounting, it was the financial controller. Could you give their names of those, of those individuals as you go through them? From the accounts department, uh, Mr. Sakib Iqbal, who was my financial controller. He, I can say that he took the overall ownership of collation of the documents. And, and anyone else? He was he was primarily the the owner of the process. And what searches have you personally conducted for documents? Me personally, no. Apart from last night. Uh, again, it was uh, Mr. Uh, Saki Big Bob. Uh, he reports directly to me, so obviously under my supervision and uh, management. Could, could you say the name of Mr. Iqbal? Saqib, S-A-Q-I-B, Iqbal, I-Q-B-A-L. Thank you. Thanks, sir. And, and so, to the best, the formulation that's been used for when responding to these requests, um, and that was a covering matter from the lawyers, Herbert Smith, three deals, is, is in response to each category, is that this represents the document that our client has located for the respective categories. Now, we've, you may not be aware, but that formulation has come, come in for criticism earlier in these proceedings. Um, you know, but, to, but to, the, to the best of your knowledge, uh, has a, a thorough search has been, has been undertaken for these for documents in the categories requested? Yes, to, to, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, and do you know where they've searched? In, in terms of, have they searched hard copy files, electronic files, email folders? Are you, are you able to give any information about the, the, where they've searched? I, I think all of them are all, I mean, like I said, the, the starting, the reference point was the order and the management account of May 31st. And we try to make sure that we obtain all the documents that we were aware of. Uh, however, the question, the order was very general and uh, very difficult to, to actually uh, fully submit when you will. The detail of the search location appears to me to be a matter for you Now, if we perhaps go back to Sky Gardens, uh, sorry, it's page one of the questions, and Sky Gardens. And if I could ask you to take out volume two, it should be in, should be, should be volume uh, bundle two, it should be one of those three files there. And if you could go to tab 57, please. a letter that you wrote to Mr. Max Meadey, the CFO at Amax Sky Gardens. And perhaps before, um, before we just come on to this, when did you join the uh, Mr. Marshall? April 9, 2013. 2013. So, and this is after Sky Gardens had, um, so that was before the Sky Gardens trial. But after all the events in question happened. Correct. And so, when were you, who, who explained to you about, this, about the Sky Gardens deal and, and litigation when you first joined? 
Mr. Patterson, I'm going to work on the basis that I'm going to allow the questions that are coming in that aren't directly on the sheet unless you stand up and object. Is that okay for me to do so? It, it is. Thank and you. as I mentioned earlier, I'm prepared to allow a little latitude. Thank you. And, and so far, I'm, I'm allowed. I, I didn't want myself to be waiting for you and you to be waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine to be the player, but I'm, I'm you. happy to, to allow you questions to be on. I would say that uh, the, as management, obviously, there was a lot of discussions on all issues, including Sky Gardens case. I, I cannot remember who the first person to talk about. And, and do you remember what was said then in that case? It seems to me that that's a question that does invite an answer to go on for several several hours potentially. Uh, uh, well, it, did did what did Mr. Al Hamdi? Have you ever had to discuss the case with Mr. Alhamdi, the uh, chairman of the PR? Personally, no. Personally. Have you ever heard anyone refer to a gang uh, as having organised this transaction? Not that I can recall. I think at trial, just a few information, at trial, that, that term uh, was used to describe Mr. Marcus Eagle. Uh, to understand Mr. Krishna Murphy, uh, Booty Javerian, uh, Dimitri Misha. Actually, I think I remember reading that in the transcript yeah. of the case. But you haven't heard anyone outside of the, 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 the litigation use that term? No. Can I, can I ask the, the question if you ask? No, this, this is all in one. This is stray, I think, a long way from the Let's scope. Go. And as I say, a little latitude, I think, is being stretched. This is just, this is just establishing Mr. Marshad's knowledge of the Sky Gardens transaction, and, and it's also relevant to DR's ability and willingness to, to pay. I would, I would submit, so. But I, I don't intend to say much of my word. Mr. Marshad is not um, here to deal with um, DR's. He's here to establish PR's ability and I would submit that includes the willingness to pay for it. So I don't intend to ask that. I'll move on to the list of questions about Sky Gardens. Um, so we were, we were volume two, Mr. Marshall, with uh, documents for tab 57, which is a letter from from you to uh, Max Media and CFO Sam at Sky Gardens. And, and you're you're basically telling him the results of the the, uh, the, the judgment of um, the 25th of March. I think it might have been the 24th of March, but it, it's that you're telling him what the, what the judgment says. It basically says the court held that DR owns the units that, that used to be Italians. Yeah. Yes. Yes, it is. And. and then if you turn over, and you can see there, sorry, you can see there, you ask for three, uh, you, you ask for various uh, pieces of information. Uh, uh, one, two, and three. Yes, yes, sir. And, and so the number one, you ask for a breakdown of details of the units in which Tally purchased shares. Uh, and then at two, you ask for the amount, amount collected and reserved so far for the owner of Tally share. And that's because AMAC has has basically been holding, uh, holding on to the proceeds and uh, been waiting to find out who it should give them, hasn't it? Correct. Yes. Uh, and then you ask the latest financial state statements of Amex Sky Gardens. Uh, at number three. Yes. And then uh, turn over to tab 58. Page there, page 741. 
we see we have the response from Mr. Hamidi. And he says, someone else says, Azam or Faisal will revert to you with the cash position. And then at the top of the page, Faisal Abdullah sends you the cash position and says that Amman's holding 28 million dirham or thereabouts. If we're going to have a, a recitation of the correspondence, we have three large A400s that are going to be here for several weeks. Yeah. We're not having a recitation of the correspondence. Dealing with the questions on the list, we're going well beyond that. I'd like you to stay, I'd like you to stay close to the list. So, I, but, so with respect, I am, I'm trying to be fair to the witness, just explain to him what these letters are, and just, just, I can ask, I can ask the question, but it, it helps to establish what the actual document. Perhaps is. another way of doing it would be ask the question, and then take the witness to the documents that you think might help him to answer the question, and then it's clear to me and to Mr. Patterson which question you're aiming at, and you're, you're, you're assisting uh, the, the, the witness to identify the documents that you think you ought to turn to. Would, so could so you do that? These way? questions are directly, the, the, they follow on from the, the document, so we have, to, we have to go to the document first, and I think it's helpful for everyone just to see. I, I, I can take these documents and say, no, as I said, let's do it the other way. Take the question that you're asking from the list, and then if you think there are documents that are going to help um, Mr. Marshad answer the question, then you can take him to those documents before he gives his answer. Mr. Marshad, would that work for you? It will work. Yes, sir. And then Mr. Patterson and I know which question you're getting at. Well, I mean, I've referred to the document. I don't know Keep going on, but I refer to these letters, which are in the first part of question one, um, and that's what we are taking them to mm -hmm. as per the question, and that's what we're then asking. There aren't that many document references in the questions, so we're not going through the whole bundle, uh, three bundles. Um, it's no, no, it's good. I mean, I'm, I'm just saying, I see that they're referenced in there, that's good, and they're part of the question. Um, yeah. Well, so for clarification, which question are, are we now asking? Number one. Sky Gardens, which, page one. part of number one? <laughs> it really would help my learned friend didn't jump off every two minutes. Well, I think we, we, I think we can have a bit of latitude, as he said he'd give me. I'm coming to the question, and I think... If we can get the structure right at the beginning, and proceed yeah. on a sensible basis where the question is clear, and then the documents which kind of an issue to refer to and refer the witness to are identified, following the raising of that question, the specific question, that, in my view, would be a sensible, practical and efficient way to proceed. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we're not doing that. And with Mr. Patterson on that. Okay, I'll ask the Okay, uh, the first bullet then, on page one, Mr. Marshall. You asked for the breakdown of the units, the Sky Gardens units, that is, in which Tallinn purchased the shares. He wants the percentages owned. Um, that's correct, isn't it? Correct. Yeah, that's correct. And then you asked for the amount collected, and, and you asked for the latest financial statements. That is correct. And then the response from Mr. Faisal Abdullah said that the, the cash held on your behalf was 28 million dirham. That is correct. But you weren't given, the, the response doesn't seem to have attached the details of the individual units. No, we never received the details. No, you never received that? So no, we have not. And have you, have you asked them for that? I believe that we have asked them for that. How? Several times, uh, but we've not been provided the details yet. The purpose of this letter that I sent, request, was purely for to, to assist me and my auditors in finalizing my March 31st financial statement. And you say that they've been asked to tell you which units. How has that been done? Absolutely. Who has someone called have there been emails? I sent, I sent a letter and there was follow up emails which I think uh, we missed and we've we've, uh, we've sent today. Some of the supplementary documents certainly may include the further inquiries made. Okay, so um, but, but 
but for the purpose of my financial close, the details of the units were not relevant. The financials and the cash position was, was adequate. So, okay, so, um, well, so how, do you know how many units remain unsold? What I understand is that they are not selling any units and they're all to lease. And do you know what's further receivables DR is entitled to after the 31st of March? No, I do not. But, but it, in, so in terms of what the receivables are, basically your share of the rent. Right? Correct. This is my understanding. Yeah. And that, that, that goes to Amlax Sky Gardens, does it? And then Amlax sends you your share, or will send you your share. Should send to whoever the ultimate owner is, which based on the court ruling is. Yeah. The next question is, was there any further correspondence between DR and AMLAC? Um, so I think you asked that, so you said there were further emails. There um, were there were further emails, mainly for the financial statements understanding. Like I said, the purpose of this exercise was for us to close our books in March. And I will go through the same exercise end of June to close our books. And so just to be clear about the units, is there or isn't there? Not that I'm aware of. I, I, I answer that because I was not in DR when the initial transaction. Well, I think we can limit it to the period after your request. So after no, the period. I've, I've not received any details of, any, of the units. And to the best of your knowledge, has your team received that? To the best of my, no, uh, to the best of my knowledge, no, my team has not received that. The only information we received after this was the cash position and explanation of their financial statements vis-a-vis -vis our ownership. Perhaps it's helpful just to flag now. Maybe that can be perhaps that could be something that could be uh, that can be follow up on that after the hearing. Whether whether the individual details of the units have been disclosed, for example, to Mr. Marshall's team. So then we're at the bottom of page two now. So the, the ASG, and that's sounds like Sky Gardens, LLC financial statements. The copy that we were initially given has odd pages missing. Do I take it that that is now a full set? Yes, yes. Hand over uh, to Ms. Tucker now. I'm going to ask about uh, the Iraqi question, which I think is at page four onwards. I've just been handed the valuation report for Central Park and Iraqi. That's a chunk of everything slightly, but nonetheless, not 
course, my question is not directed at trying to understand the value of DR's interest in Agali development and LC. The starting point um, for that process is the joint venture agreement, which is at tab one of the first volume of the papers. Have you got that? Towards the middle of the page, on the left hand side, you'll see I think the license activities. It says real estate development, buying and selling of real estate, self owned property management services. Do they remain license activities in that purpose of a rally development LLC at present? Yes, they are. It has no other purpose or activity, so far as we're aware. That, that is the current. Status and activities of our LLC, Roman LLC. I'm on page five of the question, says that's helpful. I'm not sure if you've got your questions at the bottom. Okay. Okay. At the top of the page, and my question at the top of the page is, is Central Park the only development being undertaken by a Raleigh Development LLC at present? Yes. Are there others, are there other developments in contemplation either by the shareholders of a Raleigh, so the DR Development, the Bipolarist Group, or the board of a Raleigh? So far as you're As of today, no. Are there any of them? None in contemplation as of today. As I'm aware of, no. The sale of purchase agreement between the DIFC Authority and the Raleigh Development LLC from April 2007 is at tab 6 of volume 1. Can you turn to that, please? Can you turn to the particulars of the project? And that's at page 149. Uh, a bit further on from that tab. Yes. That pati those particulars give you the plot, the plot area, the price at which, the price per square foot at which the land was bought. Are they, uh, at present, um, are those figures the same today as they were in the SPA? Only in relation to the areas, I thought. I should be a bit more. Oh, sorry, on, on the GFA? Careful. The yeah, GFA. On, the GFA. On, on GFA. No, no. Social no. GFA in the building, parking areas, and yeah, those, those are the ones that I'm interested in. No, they're not. They're not. Do you have, or is it DR in possession so far as you're aware? of the current figures? Yes, uh, I have the current figures with me. Oh, I see. Well, I, I, get, I presume that they were given to the value of the purpose of the valuation report, which is dated the February, 9th of February 2015. I am not sure because we uh, obtained the survey, I think, after the valuation, or it could be, I'm not sure. I think it was being done at the same time, so. The purpose of this was for the for the bank. The valuation's purpose was for the bank. Okay, so the figures that you've got with you, yes, they are contain, how are they contain what documents do they contain. I believe they're coming from a survey which we are currently in discussion with the AFC for uh, calculation and the final GFA because they're not it's not finalized yet. Do you know what those figures are? Yes. Can you I tell us? Yes, I can. Uh, uh, commercial is uh, 1218069. Re Resi is 787453. And retail is 31. 
Check, please, Mr. Thakral. On the transcript here, it's got the retail component of three million one hundred and thirty-three thousand six hundred and thirty-five square feet. Did I hear that correctly? That's wrong. That's wrong. It's three. It's uh, three one three three six five. Yeah. Thank you. Can you describe the development um, in broad terms and briefly? Do you want the history or no, the no, no, it's it's just or a, what it's like at the moment? You can see two towers, there are three blocks. Basically, just basically. Just, uh, give us okay. a sort of broad description of what's there. Okay, it's, uh, it's CP08 is uh, two towers, one residential, one commercial, uh, with a connecting podium course and ground level. Uh, the areas, the GFA areas, are the ones that uh, I just gave. Uh, yeah, the residential has 426 units. Uh, the commercial is currently uh, in the process of being leased. However, because of pending outstanding issues with DIFC, we've not been able to uh, actually sign any lease contracts yet. Uh, so that's being handled. We've outsourced that to colleagues. Uh, as far as the residential is concerned, the DR are the exclusive sales and market agents, and we've been selling them. It's about 80% sold. The residential units? Yes. So you're taking no money from commercial lessees yet? You're taking no money from commercial lessees yet? Uh, we've received some deposits. However, uh, it is just to, to book leasable areas, but not yet leased out. And when do you expect the, the, the dispute with the DIFC authority to be resolved? Do you have any sense of that? It's been going on for four months, I'm okay. not sure. What does the dispute concern? GFA. I think we're going to follow up on that. Well, just, just, <laughs> there are important questions for the purposes of value of the RCA and the RCA. Well, that should be aware of that. Well, then, it's, then the report should have been the evaluation of the report should have been all right, I'll go, happily go back to the list. I'll happily go back to the list in terms of assistance, Mr. Patterson. Page six, please, of the questions. So it's the credits of assistance to me as well. <laughs> Sorry. Page six. Top of the page. What's the current construction status of each tower? Completed. Sorry? Completed. Completed. We know from Arali Development's 2014 accounts that residential units were being booked during 2013. Were any sold, so far as you're aware, earlier than 2013? No. No deposits received before 2013? No. Initial launch was in September 2013. In the website, there's also a reference to Phase 1 and Phase 2. Can you describe what those are, please? I have no idea. Are you you're talking about the launch? It's not clear to me. I think some units are sold in phase one and phase two. I'm not sure whether that makes any sense. It doesn't. Yeah, well, of course, when you sell, you sell in lots. So um, phase one would have been September, and phase two would have been October, November. I'm not sure if that's what you were asking. You, did you say, am I right saying 80% of the residential units? To be, to be specific, 387 units out of the 426 have been sold. 
they are currently being sold. So that number it changes on a daily basis. Still sure. Yeah, tab 11. Back onto page six. So at the moment, if I want to buy, I'm towards the middle of the page in relation to retail and office units. The, the question is, are all residential units now on the market? My question relates to the second part of that. What about the retail and office units? Are they available for sale or rent? At the moment, you're saying yes, they are. They're available for rent, not for sale. Do you know what they're being rented out then? Each specific unit? Well, no, a broad sense of what private square footage is better than what commercial space is. Is that too broad a question? If it is, tell me. There are so many factors that go into determining a rate. Uh, if, you, if you like, I'll be able to give you ranges okay. later on. Yeah, no, that would be helpful. Um, Back to the terms on which the plot was sold, so the next question down. Um, um, an amendment to the joint venture agreement confirmed that DR was to pay to buy properties group 150 million dirhams, essentially because DR property managed to find the, the plot at a, a discounted rate. Is that fair? Would you agree with that? Uh, we paid 150 million. You paid yeah. and, and that was meant to be paid by the end of September 2008. Has that now all been paid off? 2008? I, I'm pretty sure it's been paid. You're pretty sure it's been paid off? Uh, probably, probably in 2008. Um, if you go to the second document in the bottom. Tab 2, sorry, yeah. Tab 2 of the first volume. To a I respect to a contributions, contributions to the money of so. I don't believe so. You don't? Top of page seven. Um, the, from, from the 
the accounts looks like the site has been financed by the capital contributions and money borrowed from a facility from the Islamic Bank by way of the Mishraq Club. Um, is it financed by any other means? Uh, so you're asking, is, is there any... Is there any development? Is the development itself financed any other way, other than the, the facility from the Islamic Bank and the Mishraq Club? Like yes, the, yes. It, and it the capital contributions of the shareholders to and, the world. And the collections from the sales of the residential units. And the collections from the sales of the residential units. Are there any other sources of finance or any other party providing any funding no. with respect to the development? No. Okay. Just in terms of the person that the makeup, because you know, we've then cleared so much from the accounts. There are four directors, two Dubai Property Group directors, Mr. Malik, Mr. Mubarak, two DR directors, Mr. Katami, the current CEO of DR, and Mr. Luta. Are there any other directors at present? No. Is it right that Mr. Mubarak is the CEO of Arabi Development? That is correct. Who's the CFO of Arabi Development? I am the CEO of Arabi Development. Who maintains the accounting records of Arabi Development LLC? Prior to September 2012, they were being held at by Properties Group. After that date, DR took over the accounting records. Where's the share register of Arabi Development LLC? There is no official share register as there are no transactions vis-a-vis -vis the shareholders. It is 50-50. It, it should be maintained. Uh, there's no official register, but the, the legal, the corporate sector is DBG. So it would be with DBG. Dubai Property Group. But the legal corporate Secretary of Arabi. Corporate Secretary of Arabi. Yes, he's a DPG. He's a, he's a DPG employee. He's a DPG employee. Who's that? Do you know, is the company that we do DPG at? Rachel McCann. McCann? I'm uh, sorry. Rachel, I can get you the full details. Um, let's go to the 2014 financial statement. And they are on tab 36 of volume 1. So, if we go to page 654, the third paragraph of that page starts the principal activities of the company. Does Arali develop any other property or land? No. Arali does not. That's land other than, other than CPO ways with the IMC. Other than Arali, there is no other investment. There is no other investment. So the accounts, of, so I'm on page 8 now, uh, and the second question now uh, is related to the accounts. The, the accounts haven't got any detailed profit and loss or turnover details. Do you have those details? As of which date? Um, as of the date on which, the, well, the most recent set, presumably, uh, in, for these accounts and management accounts that we have. We normally only do yearly accounts for Rani. Yeah. So as of December, there was no revenue. Yeah. But there are often lots of accounts that are prepared for the purposes of these annual accounts. 
here in the financial statements if you turn to page. Yeah. Turn to page sure, sure, sure. 651. Yep. There's a statement of income. There's no breakdown by activity there, is there? There is no revenue, so you shouldn't have a breakdown by activity. Yeah, we'll come back to another report. Um, the third question on page 8 is, do you have a these current forecasts of business value possessed of those which is the Raleigh Act that is presumably done? Currently, it is being prepared to be presented to uh, our Raleigh board, but it's not finalized yet. So management is preparing that just right now? Yes. For, for a board meeting at a particular date? Uh, yes, I think it's for review for next week. The board meeting next week? Or? There's, there's an AGM next week to approve these, to, to ratify the issuance of these accounts. Yeah. And this is the first uh, general assembly meeting, sorry, not a board meeting. Uh, to approve, to ratify these accounts and to agree on next year's plan. So the current forecast, so the current business plan is something that you have? Uh, it is being printed, it's not finalized yet. It will be finalized hopefully by Sunday. So there, no, there's no business plan in place or current forecast at the moment? Other than the, the business plan was, till, till completion of the Aradi, the focus of management and the board was to get the project over the line and complete it. Now, once we finalize and get clarity on the DIFC matter of the outstanding GFA issue, then we'll be able to do a proper forecast for the business. Um, and when was that? When was that completion? When did that take place? The, the, the completion, the physical, the BCC was issued on 14th of December 2014. Distinction in the accounts between investment property at the top left hand for a non prime asset investment property and the entry below the close search property held for development and sale. The investment property has been valued at 1.2 billion dirhams. Are those the retail and office units? Correct, that is the office and retail component. If you could turn to note 5, which relates to that point about investment property, which is on page. objective of Aradi was to build residential, commercial, and retail, and lease it. In 2012, it was decided to sell the residential units and keep leasing the commercial and retail. And that is the change in plan. That's understood. Is that change in plan documented in any way? I'm sure in, in board meetings, minutes. Did management, so far as you're aware, produce a plan suggesting this proposed Change of I'm not sure this was before I joined. Um, back to the non current assets at, sorry, current assets even, at page 650 of the account. This is the bottom of page 8. So I think I'm right in saying that. So the second entry property held for the London sale, which was note six, those are the residential units. Yes, that is correct. And in terms of the portion of the units that are for sale, all of them are for sale. Yes. 
public page line of questions. The second, the second point is, why, so far as we're aware, was there a change in the strategy from simply leasing to sale in respect of retail and, sorry, in respect of residential, and lease in respect of commercial units? I would assume that would be to help finance the completion of the project. They required the sales proceeds from the residential units to be utilized to complete the project. That would be my speculation on the change. And just at present, with the receipts that you've obtained from the sale of, is it two thirds or three quarters of the residential, 80% of the residential units, does a Raleigh development require further financing in respect to any aspect of the development from any other, other source? In the building's complete, so presumably not. Well, it's complete, but we still have a lot of outstandings to contractors and of course, others. Of course, and that answers the question. I would have to check uh, the cash, the, the projected cash flows, and, and get back to you. Is there any proposal for the AGM that's taking place next week, for further, which deals with any further financing that's required? No. No. It's not on the agenda or anything. No. Page 668 of the accounts. So we're in note 9, and about a third of the way down, there's an <coughs> entry there, loan from related parties. Okay. The first entry is wide development, the R development, the OGS is the shareholder, 131 million. Interest-free loan from the shareholders to help in the funding of the project. Mm -hmm. um, was there an agreement documenting the loan? I do not believe that there was an agreement. I think it was a shareholder decision. Again, okay, so documented in the board meeting or shareholder should, meeting? Should be. And in the accounts, that loan is identified differently from the contributor capital. So the contributor capital towards the development then would have been set out in the contributor capital contribution of the is that right? Yes, that is correct. So, page 10 of the question, 654 of the account, page 654 of the account. Yeah, 654 of the account. Under the heading of the most going concern, there are three bullet points here. The third bullet point is cash collected from sales during the year 2014 amounted to 230 million dirham. In 2013, amounted to 50 million dirham. Um, the second uh, bullet point on my page 10 of the questions, um, I want to know whether. You You've got item on schedules demonstrating how the 230 million and 50 million have been calculated. You've got those schedules, have you? Yes. Yep. Um, at page 6, I'm back to the accounts, page 653. So just before. If you look under the heading operating activities, the last one. The penultimate entry under that subheading. The entry is increased in advances for customers. The year ended 2014, 230 million, and then the same figure as 50 million in respect of the uh, 2013. Uh, yeah, increase in advances for customers. But then back to 
651, just two pages back in the account. The first entry on statement of comprehensive income is an other income, and then the, you can see that the amount there, 196,000 to is considerably is considerably less than that. Can you explain the difference? Why it's not recognised as income? I'm, I'm sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. You want me to explain the accounting standards to you? Well, I want to understand um, the policy that Aradi takes in its accounts for purposes of recognising revenue. I think if you, if you turn to in financials, mm -hmm. uh, there is a, a revenue recognition policy there. Uh, we follow a accrual basis, not a cash basis of accounting. So obviously we don't recognize revenue on cash collections, mm -hmm. but on accrual basis. Mm -hmm. Under IFR, IFRIC 15, which is a standard that covers revenue recognition for real estate development, it is when risk and reward is passed to the customer mm -hmm. and this in Aradi happens when we either have a 100% collection and the unit is complete and ready for handover, or we hand it over to customers. So this is the handover of the units is happening in 2015, so the revenue would, would be recognized in 2015. Okay. In those accounting standards that you've just mentioned, and it's that paragraph 316, The middle of that paragraph says, however, the terms of the property, equitable interest in the property may best in the department of all legal title to and therefore risks of water ownership are transferred at that stage. In those circumstances, essentially, revenue is recognized for the equitable interest in the property passing to the buyer. So I'm on page 11 of the questions here. The first question. Ask the question one more time because I'm not sure I understood the oh, question. Absolutely, 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 absolutely. What, what was the question you were asking on revenue so, recognition? The, the, the question on revenue recognition is that, simply put, Aradi received 235 million odd by way of advances from purchases of new residential units in the development. The question about the question I want to ask relates to how that 235 million is set out in, a, in its account. At what point it is identified as being revenue of the company. Notably, that's crucial for the purposes of valuing the company. Well, we we'll, we'll need to know what revenues are. So whether or not, whether or not it's uh, classified by the company as being revenue depends on the revenue recognition policy that our company has, that's its basement standard, but it's also the company's policy. So what we need to understand is the revenue recognition policy is set out in paragraph 3.16 of those accounts. And, and the numbers can change depending on uh, 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 what point the revenue recognised. So my revenue recognition policy is, is, is flat. And my question is about that revenue recognition policy, the circumstances of can be passed over such that revenue is recognised. Because the answer we've had so far is well, <coughs> revenue is recognised when the, when the unit's handed over. Is that correct. right? Correct. That is correct. But so uh, 300, 80% of the units have been sold, but not, not all of those units have been handed over. None of those have been handed over. 
upwards of 31st December 2014. But 2014. So the revenue, so the revenue, the 236 odd million advance is we recognise the 2015 when those right. But just at the moment, just at the moment, the accounts recognised revenue where equitable, the equitable interest in the property is transferred to that person. And so my question is, how does that how does that work? If they haven't been handed over yet. And what, what, how, how do you recognise the revenue with respect to those units and, and sector this? What proportion of those units uh, are, are uh, um, have been handed over in that lot? So what proportion of units uh, have the equitable interest handed over such that you can recognise the revenue? None, none of the units had any equitable interest or handed over as of December 31st. That is why the accounts have no revenue. So, well, the funny thing, I mean, that, that's right. The question is that going back to <coughs> page 651 of the account, uh, the top entry is other income 196. What does that really relate to? It doesn't relate to any, any money recognised by the company that has been received from customers. Honestly, uh, 196,000. Uh, to the best of my recollection, it could have been a forfeiture and maybe some other miscellaneous items. I, I, but, yeah, I know your account, you know what that figure is. Like, I, I, I would be able to give you a breakdown if you'd like. You'd be able to. Of course. Yeah. Um, to, to be clear, though, we're talking about 196,000 dirhams. Is that your question? Uh, I've got, I've got the entry in the account, it is what I'm talking about. The right. entry in the account is not explained. Understood, and thank you. There are no revenues to recognize by customer master titles that were swapped. Understood, thank you. Although we may be here alongside the other figures at that level, we are happy to provide a break. Yeah, that's very right. helpful. Just the last very final question in relation to revenue recognition. This is paragraph, this is page 11. Just above of my questions. Just above the subheading administrative costs. I don't expect any to be refunded. Right. So that 236 million will become revenue of the company in 2015. Yes, that is correct. Turning to then the bottom of page. Well, well, hang on a second. If I've understood it, it would become revenue in 2015, provided the properties are handed over. Is that is that right, or it becomes revenue anyway? No, it, it would become revenue uh, when we hand over the units and the customers complete payments and there is no dispute with the customers. There, there, is, there is a possibility that customers might 
not pay and then uh, not complete payment, in which case we would go through a process of forfeiture and cancellation and there might be uh, actually there might be a refund if if that's the case of I some, but I, we don't expect any from the collection process. Mm -hmm. I, I do not foresee that there would be any forfeiture or cancellations. Uh, and is it also dependent on whether the dispute with DIFC is is resolved? Yes, this, this is one of the critical items because if the dispute with DIFC continues for a, for, for a long period, then we are opening the door for customers having valid cause to exit the SBAs because of the delay in issuing title deeds. But we don't anticipate that. We expect that we will resolve our issues with DIFC shortly and we will be able to meet all our obligations to the customer. In 2015? Yes. Thank you. Well, the dispute, the dispute with the DIFC authority, I think you have related to the GFA and the GIF of the... Oh, yes. No, that has the potential to delay title issuance to the customers. And under our SBA with the customers, we are supposed to provide title within a reasonable period. And the clock is ticking on that. Um, just in terms of the payment plans, then, the 80% of the residential unit holders have signed up to, if they're expected to handover in 2015, what expects of their quite close to paying off most of the units, most of their beautiful units. We have a mix, uh, obviously, bag of customers. We have some customers who would pay cash on handover, full payment. We have some customers who would pay mortgages to make the final payments, in which case those units would be mortgaged to the third-party banks. And we have customers who have come to us and requested payment plan. In respect of the, well, those who have taken out mortgages, they've, most mortgage companies presumably have rented the caveats in respect of the individual units their buyers have purchased. That is correct. They, they've done that already. They're in the process of doing that. But there are some rented caveats that you've got copies of that uh, relate to individual units with respect to which mortgage finance has been provided. That, that I have? Well, the, 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 the DR will have. They must have copies yes. of the caveats. Yes, I'm sure they do. If it helps, Mr. Thukra, I think you took us to a document earlier which seemed to set out against each unit the amount that had been paid so far. I don't know how up to date that was, but that might also assist. Yeah, no, I, 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 I think that's what it does assist. If, uh, that that, that uh, tab was tab 11. Can you go back to that document? Can I take you to the administrative costs um, now? And that's at page 11 of the question at the bottom of the page. The back of the account, sorry, and that's tab 36 of uh, volume 1. And page 680. Is this a good, a good chance to have a, sure. have a break? Um, should we break for 10 minutes? 10 minutes. Okay, thank you. All right.